Okay, I'm now ready for lesson 29. In lesson 28, I explained that the program has three major parts, namely input, processing and output. In this lesson, I will show you how to plan your applications by laying out the input, processing and output into a diagram called an IPO table. Although this may seem like a time-consuming and boring step in the development process, it is very important. Planning an application will save time in the long run. It also helps you to identify the requirements of an application and it provides a means to view the process in a logical way. By planning your applications, you ensure that you understand the task at hand and that you work systematically. Many of my students told me that it helps them to get an immediate starting point when doing exams and school assignments. By analyzing the problem first and then planning a solution, students actually save a lot of time because the solution makes more sense and they immediately know what they will use in the program and how to produce the correct results. Students also feel more confident and at ease if they understand what is required. To illustrate what I mean, let's look at the simple problem for which you must write the Delphi program. Let's assume you get the following assignment. Your school is selling movie tickets to raise money for a football tour. You are tasked to write a simple Delphi program to calculate the total amount that must be paid by a buyer. The price of one ticket is $5. The user of your program must type the first name of a buyer as well as the number of tickets he or she wants to purchase. The program must then calculate the total amount to be paid and display it with an appropriate message, for example, Rick, you must pay $15. The first step in planning an application is to just simply read the problem statement to get a general idea of what is wanted. This is a simple problem and I'm sure that many programmers will dive directly into Delphi and start to create a possible solution. But what if the problem was more complex? If you do not plan it well, you will have to refer back to the problem statement several times to try and make sense of it. Sometimes you will do a design and write code and after all the time you spent, you realize that you do not get the correct results or you forgot about something. Then you must go back to the problem statement, read it again and try it again and again and again. You will then soon realize that you actually wasted more time writing new code and discarding previous attempts because you didn't work systematically. And suddenly you run out of time and you wonder how it is possible for others to complete the program in such a limited time period. Let's look at the problem again and solve it systematically. After reading the problem, a good practice is then to extract the requirements and to transform it into zero code. This is the second step in planning an application. To write the zero code, you can grab any piece of paper or you can use the back side of your exam paper and write it down. It really should take only a minute or two. And it doesn't have to be typed or written in neat handwriting, because it is for your own use. Zero code is like programming code but you are literally listing the steps and instructions that your program must perform as you understand it from the problem statement. And you can do it in your own words. Let's try that. First, determine what the program should produce. In other words, what the purpose is. The problem statement tells me that I must write a Delphi program that calculates the total amount that the buyer must pay for movie tickets. That is the main task or procedure of the application. In zero code, I will write down task, calculate the total amount for movie tickets. And just like procedures in Delphi, I write the begin and end statement. All the instructions that relate to this main task, which is to calculate the total amount, will then go between the begin and end statements. The next fact that I can extract from the problem statement is that a movie ticket sells for $5. I can make a mental note of that or I can write it down on a piece of paper. The price will later be used to calculate the total amount. The next requirement reads, the user of your program must type the first name of the buyer as well as the number of tickets he or she wants to purchase. Here I have two ingredients or inputs, the buyer's first name and the number of movie tickets. In the zero code I want to indicate that my program must ask the first name of the buyer then the program must get or read the first name typed by the user. When we get or read an input value, we normally put that value into a placeholder or a variable. You will learn more about variables in a later lesson. The placeholder in this case is called first name. I also want to indicate in the zero code that my program must ask the number of tickets to purchase. 
and then the program must get or read the number of tickets typed by the user. That value will be placed in a placeholder called number of tickets. Now that you have the ingredients or input, you must process it, because the problem statement says the program must then calculate the total amount to be paid. In this case, I must do a calculation. I must multiply the value in the number of tickets placeholder that I read in the previous instruction by 5. That is because the price of one ticket is $5. The result of the calculation is then assigned to a placeholder called total amount. In zero code, we use an arrow to indicate that the result of an expression on the right side of the instruction is assigned to the placeholder on the left side of the instruction. We do it like that because that is also the way that we will assign values in our Delphi code. The problem statement also instructs you to display the result with an appropriate message. For example, Rick, you must pay $15. This will be the output of your program. I will then add the instruction to my zero code like this. Display, first name, you must pay, total amount. First name is the placeholder for the name that I read in the statement on the line that I indicate there on the screen. So, if the user typed Rick for the first name, then this line will read Rick and the value in the first name placeholder will be Rick. Total amount is the placeholder for the result that I calculated in this line. So, if the user typed 3 for the number of tickets, this line will read the value 3, and the value in the number of tickets placeholder will therefore be 3. This line will then take the value in the number of tickets placeholder, which is 3, and multiply it by 5, because the price of one ticket is $5. 3 times 5 is 15. The value 15 will then be assigned to the total amount placeholder. In this line, I want to display the value in the first name placeholder, which is Rick, and after the first name the phrase, you must pay, and a dollar symbol, and after that, the value of the total amount placeholder, which is 15. My output will therefore read, Rick, you must pay $15. You now extracted all the important requirements out of the problem statement, and you wrote zero code to help you understand the logic and flow of your application. Step 3 in planning your application is to create an IPO table. IPO refers to input processing and output, and I already explained what that is. You must now extract the placeholders and processes identified in your zero code and organize them in tabular format. You can also do this on a piece of paper or the back of your exam paper. Draw a table on the piece of paper with three columns and a few rows. The way that I present it here may look pretty, but you will just make a rough drawing of the IPO table on a piece of paper. You don't have to draw straight lines or measure the width and height of the columns and rows. Remember, the drawings are for your own use and it is supposed to save time in the long run. It should only take a minute or two to draw the IPO table. The top row is the header of your IPO table. Write Input, Processing and Output into the top cells. If you are worried about time constraints, just write I for Input, P for Processing and O for Output. Under the input column, you must write the names of all the placeholders that you identified as input placeholders. In the zero code, we read two values and placed them into placeholders called first name and number of tickets. So, write those names in the input column. Under that, you must write down the names of the component that will be used for input. The problem statement states that the user must type the first name and number of tickets. Edits will therefore be the most suitable components. So, I write down EDT first name and EDT number of tickets as the names of the input components. Under processing, you must write down how you will process the input. In the zero code, I already have an instruction to do that. The instruction is to multiply the value in the number of tickets placeholder by 5, and then I assign the result to a placeholder called total amount. So, I take the instruction and write it in the processing column. On the output, you must write down the names of the placeholders that will be used to display the output. In the zero code, in this line, I indicate that I will display the value in the first name placeholder and the value in the total amount placeholder. So I write the names of the two placeholders in the output column. Under that, you must write the name of the component that must display the output. I want to show the output in a panel named PNL result, so I write PNL result in that line. 
And that is how easy it is to draw an IPO table. The next step is to design your application. You can also do that on the same piece of paper. This is just a rough drawing of the layout of your graphical user interface with short descriptions of the names and purposes of the different components. Here is my drawing. It doesn't look beautiful, but what the heck? My teacher is not going to see it, so I am doing it for my own use, as quickly as possible. This step should only take a minute or two. According to my IPO table, I want to use two edits for the inputs. That is the edits that I will name EDT first name and EDT number of tickets under the input column. The processing will be done in an event handler. The problem statement doesn't tell me on which event the processing must be done, so my inference is that the user must click on a button to do the processing. So I include a button on my design that I will call BTN Calculate. I indicated in my IPO table that I want to display the output in a panel that I want to call PNL Result. So, I also include that on my drawing. By drawing the layout on a piece of paper, you give yourself a good idea of what is needed and where it will be placed. Now, because you already analyzed the problem and because you already defined the solution on a piece of paper, you will be able to create your graphical user interface quicker than before. And because you do not have to go back and forth between the problem statement, the graphical user interface and your code, you will also be able to implement code faster. This will really save you a lot of time. The first four steps should really not take much of your time. The next step is to create the graphical user interface in Delphi's IDE. You learned how to create graphical user interfaces in Chapter 1, but you did what I told you to do. Because you have drawings and a plan now, you can use your own initiative. Finally, you will write code to implement the tasks and the instructions. Throughout this chapter, we will implement our Delphi applications from our drawings and IPO tables. In the next video, I will give you a few problem statements. I want you to follow the same steps that you learned in this lesson and try to create your own IPO tables and drawings. I'll talk to you again in lesson 30.